Hi, welcome to How to Create a Dynamic Chart Part 1. In this video series, we're going to go over all the different ways we can make our charts and visuals dynamic. I'm using Excel 2010, so we have things like spark lines and things like that, but we're just going to go over basic charts and how to make them changeable. This is what it looks like. I'm using this sample data. It's essentially sales data uh, that's made up, and I actually download it from I believe the website is Contextures and uh, Excel sample data. So I'll post this link into the info. So if we go back to it, what we want to do is change this chart based on a drop down selection. So here we have four items in the drop down. So I'm going to click units. It's already at units. I'm going to click on total. And the chart's going to change. And then I'm going to click on commission and the chart is going to change and so on and so forth. So in order to do this we just need uh, a few different tools and um, I'm going to show you how to make that. First thing we want to do is we want to label these columns and the reason we're going to label the columns is because in the future we're going to use an indirect function to reference these labels. We're going to go equals address and then we're going to go equals row. Our row will be a row function and we're just going to say so look at the row that you're in. Our column will do the same thing. And we're going to pull L2. Then we're going to surround that with a mid function. So we're going to go mid, take that address. Our start number is going to be 2. The number of characters is going to be 1. And it's going to return the column name. We're just going to stretch that across. And that's going to be used for our reference. So we're going to use these column names as an indirect reference for what goes on over here. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, create a index for our region. So right now we're just looking through our regions. We have Quebec, Ontario, and Alberta. And uh, yes, you can just write those in right now. But in the future, we're actually going to have that. We're going to be able to change the x-axis. So um, currently, in this video, we're just changing the y-axis. So if you want to follow along to the next one, uh, you need to use this formula. So the formula looks something like this. It's if, count if, so we're going to count if Quebec, so M3 through M3, and our criteria is going to be M3. We're going to count if it's greater than 1. The value if true is going to be null, and the value if false is going to be max. You can either use max or count on this k2 through k2 plus 1. Close it off. We're going to use these numbers as our index for this region in column M. So if I stretch that down, you'll notice that it didn't work. And the reason it didn't work is because we need to make this expanding range. So we need to make this index work with expanding ranges. And we're going to do two expanding ranges. And how you do that is all you have to do is go F4 on one of the cell values and F4 on another one of the cell values. So what it's going to do is stretch down the values. So now that it's doing that, I'll show you what that looks like. So if I click on this cell, notice that the values stretch all the way down. And this count or max function stretches down as well. And the reason we want to do that is because we want to check if this value exists in any of the values before it. So we want it to stretch all the way to the beginning to check if it uh, exists before. So we have, um, we have our index of unique values in, this re in the region column. And so we're going to use that over here. And we're just going to write a quick little VLOOKUP. So we're going to go equals VLOOKUP lookup value is there. Our table array k3 through t183. We're going to make that a permanent reference. It's the third column over and we're going to look for an exact match. So I'm going to add an if error because it's going to pull up falses once we get past three. So if error, drag that down. Okay. So that brings us our three values that we're going to look up. Okay, so in this function, we're going to use a sum if. So we're going to go equals sum if 
our range is going to be this region range. We're just going to go M through M. Our criteria is Quebec. And our sum range is, this is where it gets a little tricky, we're going to use indirect. So we're going to go, our sum range is indirect. Cell has the text of another cell, it'll turn that into an actual cell reference. So for indirect, we're going to go indirect T. See how we have that T there through T. And you can't really do that, you have to use AND or ampersand. So T ampersand through ampersand T. So it's going to look T through T. Okay. Okay, so we've got to make it a permanent reference. F4, F4. There you go. Okay, so the T is an HLOOKUP function. So we need to put our HLOOKUP function into this X1 cell. So we're going to go equals HLOOKUP. Our lookup value is going to be here. We're looking for commission. And our look table array is going to be here. So F4, comma 2. It's the second row down. So that's where we put 2. And we want an exact match. So that is going to pull T. So if I change the drop down menu to unit cost, you'll notice that this value changed from T to R. That's because unit cost is in the R column. And it pulls that up through that H lookup. And we use the indirect function to turn this text into a, an actual cell reference. Um, that's going to bring us the right value. So now what we need to do is create our chart. Go insert, column, column chart. Okay, and that gives us the basic chart that we want to do. Um, personally, I like to format it a little bit. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of grid lines, so I like to make them really light. And then um, in Excel 2010, we have a lot of different options for how um, this can look, you know, whether you want it black or my personal favorite is this, is this kind of slight color change, and I think it looks really professional. So, so that way when I change this to total or to commission or to units, the chart changes. So um, the other thing we can do is if we go into format chart area, actually, excuse me, if we go into select data, we need to edit our series. So let's edit the series name to be this B3 cell. And then we have a title. So we have units as our title. So if I change it to total, the total would be the title, and so on and so forth. And also, if I wanted to change this header, so if I wanted to say total total revenue, if I go like that, change that, and then I go back to my dropdown, you'll notice that my dropdown is now changed to have that total revenue value, so my chart title changes as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. In our next video, we're going to go over how to make these charts uh, change on the x-axis as well as the y-axis. So currently it's just changing the y-axis, um, as you can see. So we're going to figure out how to change the values on the x-axis as well. Thank you for watching and hope to see you on the next video.